One way that we address naming online is through translation. That's how the domain name system works. I take a host name and I resolve it into an IP address. And that translation happens all the time. Another way that we address naming online is through convention. In both cases, what we're really trying to do is we're trying to simplify things for humans, right? Humans aren't good at remembering all these numbers and stuff like that. So if humans had to remember what port they had to talk to a web server over, or even the IP address that the web server was located, it would be very difficult to use the internet. And so with the domain names, what we do is we translate them. When you go to www.internetclass.org, that gets translated to an IP address. Port numbers, however, uh, the story is a little bit different. So remember that um, you know, in order to communicate with a website, I not even not only need to know the IP address, but the web server waits for me on that site and it's listening on a particular port. So in order to connect to it, I need to know which TCP port I should talk to. If I talk to, for example, if I try to initiate a connection on the wrong port, the server won't be listening there and nothing will happen. So let me, uh, let me show you how that works, right? So I've got my terminal here and let's fire up, up a telnet section to experiment.internetclass.org and let's go to port 80. Okay, uh, oops. Okay, let's go to port 80 and let's get the index and you see this worked, right? So there, when I, when I telneted to port 80, there was a web server there waiting to talk to me. And it, we know when I asked it uh, politely, did the right thing, it did the right thing. That's pretty awesome. Okay, but now let's use the wrong port. Let's try port 81. Uh-oh, connection refused. So this is a problem. Uh, the, there's no web server there waiting on port 81. In fact, there's nobody waiting there. Let me try a different port. Let's try 22. Okay, so now I'm on port 22, uh, uh-oh. So I tried to get the index, I tried to speak HTTP to this server um, on port 22, but this isn't a web server. This is a secure shell server. It's waiting for me to log in and so that I can use the machine. Uh, same thing again, let's try 1025. Okay, so I've got, uh, uh-oh, yeah, so, uh, I have another problem here. So I connected to a server running at uh, 10,025. This is a mail server. And again, I tried to speak HTTP to it. I said, send me the index. And it said, I have no idea what you're talking about. You're not speaking my language. I'm a mail server. Don't ask me about a web page. Okay, so, um, so this illustrates this problem, which is when I try to retrieve a web document, how do I know what port I'm supposed to talk to? There's all these numbers out there. How does it work? Okay. Uh, and here, rather than translation, we're going to use a different approach. And the compro uh, the <laughs> approach, we're going to use a different approach, uh, a different approach. The approach is called convention. Um, and this is uh, these are something that are known as well-known port numbers. So. For example, it is uh, typical to operate a web server on port 80. An un insecure web server that does not, that speaks HTTP, operates on port 80. So when you initiate an HT, uh, this sort of HTTP connection, if your URL starts with HTTP, by default, your browser will contact that server on port 80 and try to initiate a connection. Now you can override that behavior. So you can say HTTP, um, server.com colon is an now port number 8080 and if you do this what you're saying is I want to talk to this web server but I want to talk web server to it on 8080 I want to speak HTTP to it on 8080 because that's where I think it's listening but you probably rarely have ever see this because it's a mess no one wants to remember this you go to www.google.com and you talk on port 80 now, let's, so let's talk about some well-known port numbers. There's a bunch of these. Um, some of the ones that you use a lot. 80 is HTTP, so that's, that's uh, web stuff. There's another web port, which is 443. That's HTTPS. So when you want to talk, establish a secure connection to a website, you establish that connection over port 443. So if you go to HTTPS, www.google.com, you're going to, uh, the browser is going to try to use port 443. I'm going to keep this in order. Uh, port 22, uh, that's where the secure shell typically runs. Uh, port 25, typically used by a mail server. Um, in that example before, we used 10,025. That's because we're running it on a high part to avoid 
firewall uh, details are not important. So these are some examples of well-known port numbers. And if you look up, there are lists of these. And there's a lot. You know, FTP has its own port number. Um, the network time protocol has its own port number. And the, by establishing these conventions, we allow these systems to communicate with each other uh, without making you use these port numbers. So when you use SSH, your client automatically connects on port 22 unless you tell it to do something weird. When you use HTTP, your client web client automatically tries to connect on port 80 unless you to tell it to do something weird. Same thing with HTTPS. When you run a mail server and the mail server tries to contact another mail server, by default it uses port 25 unless you tell it to do something weird. And similarly with the mail server, there's a secure port to run a mail server on. I just forgot what it is. So anyway, so, so when we, we talk about TCP port numbers, we have this naming problem. Um, and instead of doing translation, what we do is we establish a convention. So all the servers all over the world and the clients have all sort of agreed that when we want to speak insecure HTTP, we do it over port 80 um, and so on. And this is uh, what allows the internet to function without forcing you to remember all these numbers and type them every time you want to do anything online.